Welcome once again to Conscripted, episode 36. We rejoined the party on the evening of the 20th. Oh, no, I'm sorry. We actually made it to... Uh, no, we are. We're still on the evening of the, the 20th of, the of Deshris. I, no, we did get through the night because I remember in the morning I had uh, Cassius do like a sense motive thing for an hour on um, what's her face I thought that was still in the middle of the night no we're no, still in the middle of the night this was in the morning we're still in the middle of the night because there's yeah. there's another thing that that, that as happens. far as I knew we okay, never we're, made we're, it we're right the it's, we were 100 percent we're in the morning because we took we took 20 to do it so um, I mean you, you can you can check the video the vod in between and then you can you can tell me that when when you proved it on the vod but. I do remember that, like, Cassius sensed mode of me, and he could tell that I was definitely no longer, um, like, mind-controlled, basically. Like, all of those vibes he was getting from me were gone, but I thought that was just in the middle of the night after he basically downed the vampire standing over me. Not... I know the guards came. I remember that much. I thought we were in the morning, too, but uh, not enough to go back and check the other video to prove that. I don't care. Fine. We're, it's the next morning. Whatever. But I thought, you guys I mean, you guys I, can get your few hours. If you have stuff for us to do at night, then... No. No, no, no. I'll, I'll pay it forward later on. Don't worry. I Don't worry. I got it. It's fine. We're good. Everything is fine. Everything will be fine. The only thing I'm sure about is that the guards definitely came because I had to explain to them what happened. I remember that much. Mm-hmm. All right. So, uh, sleeping order is important though because a number of people have not gotten a full night's sleep. Yep, yeah, that's why. So we were sleeping until ten, but um, and I think Cassius took the first shift, and then I guess Zeke would probably take one. Or no, Zeke's not with us. No, Zeke's not being allowed to stay up by himself. Mm -hmm. Um. So it's like I guess it would be like I'm so dumb. Cassius, me, Pierre, Sphinx, kind of thing. Okay. And Pierre and, and Zeke can stay up, I guess, with me potentially. Well, either way, this happens to you, Dan, during your uh, um, during a part of your before you head off to bed, or possibly right after you wake up. It doesn't really matter which side of it it happens in. Okay. Uh, what matters is that it happens. Um, I'll say it's around the time that you wake up, actually. Um, I need a fortitude save from you as you're waking up. Okay. Okay. Um, so as you're waking up, like, you notice that there is, like, an odd stiffness in your arms and legs, like more than you would normally feel. Um, but you still manage to kind of pull your way out of bed, but something about it feels very unnatural. And give me a will save. Ooh, and you get the distinct feeling that you're being watched. Okay. Um character like would this kind of seem like it's in line with like Zeke's thing yeah you you remember this from before when this happened when, yep. when there was the attempt on you only it didn't leave you with like a stiffness that part's a little bit different um this so that part's new but the feeling of being watched definitely reminds you of that feeling you had that last time it happened to you and, and does the stiffness feel like someone was trying to control me or trying to like paralyze me Possi it feels a little more like something was trying to paralyze you. It like largely feels like it's locking in the joint areas. Mm -hmm. um, as opposed to like when it was controlling you, it makes your muscles contract more. So it doesn't feel like a resistive motion. It feels more like you've been like working out all day. Yep. Whereas here it feels like somebody's like had you pinned to something and you're doing like a lot of straight strenuous motion. Okay. Um... Just gonna like go put the pokeball on my head. <laughs> <coughs> and actually, do I? I 
I don't actually do that, but I might like sort of like sort of lay with like a sheet of the golem on top of myself for the moment. Okay. Just try and like insulate myself. Mm -hmm. There's nothing really further that comes from it. Yep. Just um, I'm on my guard. Kind of, kind of expected something might go down if we were in town. So. <sighs> Oh, I think he feels like he's much richer in mind dollars. No. <laughs> um, the rest of the party wakes up as normal. <clears throat> I didn't remember exactly what I was going to be buying, and I totally forgot that it existed, and I'm an idiot. Uh, didn't we talk about the Endless Bandolier? Yes, that too, but uh, I totally forgot. I would, I would be buying um, a Ring of Sustenance. Okay. Because that would make so much sense. And it's definitely much cheaper than I thought it would be. But uh, if I can't have bought it yet, I'll just buy it when we're No, you can now. easily find one in town. Okay. So in part of the time, you can <laughs> run over, pick those things up. Remember the 10% discount. Oh, yes. Thank you. So in the morning... Um... So Ra looks very, very frail. I don't know if it would be in our best interest to have you come along with the shapers. Shifters. Shifters, sorry. Okay. Something goes wrong. Um, I guess I would leave it up to Ra, but um, we do know that they're potentially dangerous if something does go awry. I don't expect there to be anything bad going down, but... We, it's been a while, so we don't really know um, what their agenda will be. Yeah, I mean, I'm assuming I haven't healed any of my con back yet. You need a full... Actually, I figure you probably would have been able to get in a full night's rest so you can have healed one point of your con. One point. One whole point. Look at that. One whole whopping point. I got three con now. We're up to 14 HP. Wait, no, that would be... Yeah. We had 18 plus what? Um, yeah, if... If Ra just wants to stay in town, I would say it's fine. Um, Zeke, I definitely want to come with me. I don't want me and Zeke in town any longer than we have to be. Okay. Anyone else it's up to? I'd ideally like Cassius to come along too, but... Um, is... So, where do we land on... Is she gonna stay here by herself then, or...? Like, if Sinx wanted to stay with Ra, that could be... But then if too. something goes wrong, you have, like, <laughs> no healer. Or Haster. No, Aros would be with Pardon us. I mean, no, sorry, not Haster. I meant the, um... Augury. If, like... <coughs> Oh, Something yeah. started to go bad and you, like, needed it. I mean, if, if we're pretty convinced from, like, uh, from Cassius's, like, gauging of, like, Ricotta's, like, thing, I, I don't think we need to leave anybody behind. Other than, like, I, again, like, we're not, like, I'm not, like, ordering that you stay behind. It's just, like, it could be dangerous. These shifters are very strong. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely in, like, one hit, and I'm full-on dead yes. territory right now. Uh -huh. Not, like, unconscious, like, just dead, so. Like, these shifters are one of the closest we've been to a TPK. Um, so, it's, I, it's up to you. But, like, I've been, essentially, I'm not ordering you to come, and if I'm, like, convinced that you're not under a vampire influence, then you can definitely stay here alone and just do whatever you want in town. Yeah, I think I would just probably stay back just because it seems like if, if I went along and something did go wrong, it's just going to be like I'm useless and just like a liability at that point. Can I get like a knowledge religion here? Because uh... Yeah, can we maybe just go to the temple here? Because that was the last town that we could get your stuff here this time. Yep, there's a, there's a good point of insight there from Zeke, who uh, does the equivalent of a Knowledge Religion 20 check. 
Sorry, what did he say? There is always the option to pay for heal for restoration. Oh, true. The church is really restoration to get to all donations. of it. I have to. Or does restoration get like some small amount? She has so uh, much damage. Restoration is. Hold on one sec. Uh, regular restoration is full cure. Uh, lesser restoration is D4 points at a time. How much do we know how much those would cost? Uh, oh one sec. I'll let you know what the difference between them is. Um, oops, it's... Hold on. Let's get this. I always get this cost wrong. By my Cause... calculations, one gold should do it. Nope. There is a... It's a minimum of a hundred. Yeah. Why can't I go to lesser restoration? I'm clicking lesser restoration and it takes me to fucking... Regular restoration? Is lesser restoration not existing? Lesser restoration is a no, is subheading of down. restoration. Yeah. You just have to scroll down and it'll tell you the lesser restoration lower down on restoration. There it is. Uh, Kestrel level times spell level times 10. That's what it was. Uh, 4 times 7 times 10. Uh, so you're looking at about 400, or about, yeah, about 400 gold. have all of the ability damage cured so it's it's a time saving thing because right now you're looking at 14 days before all of this gets healed yeah um yeah i guess i'll i'll just go pay for that okay well let's uh let's have you there's a bit of a role-playing opportunity here in you going okay. to the temples here um because the temples here are a little different than what you've encountered in some other places um the temples are largely controlled by guilds um, and you're going to find a little bit different experience in each temple that you go to. Uh, so in town here, um, there is a, let me bring up the list here. Hold on a sec. Um, I guess... If, if that gets brought up, I would, I don't know if I know, but I would basically be interested in knowing if there's a, a guild that has a church that um, is related to like the trade that we helped restore, and maybe they'd be a little bit more thankful and like give a better price to you, Ra. Okay. Um, I don't know if that's actually a thing. But. Yeah. So there are, there is a temple to Mayat, who is the god of travel. Um... There is a temple to Suinol, um, and there is a temple to Athir here. And all those are what the latter two are what related to trade? Or? Uh, Mayad is the only one that's really related to trade. Suinol is the god of knowledge and understanding and um, sort of a broker of neutrality. Uh, so many, many people will like trust a Suinol cleric to, to give them like a rational and well thought out um, opinion of a situation. So they tend to be um, moderators or mediators in cir circumstances between multiple guilds or between businesses within a guild. Um, Athir is more about production uh, than about trade necessarily. And Mayad is about transportation. So there's not like really one direct God of trade. They all sort of like tie into each other to create sort of a, a infrastructure for better trade. So I think of those, nonetheless, I think I, I would suggest Maya because that would seem to be the one that the people that were traveling and taking shipments and stuff that were in danger before, um, and we kind of stuck our necks out to sort of deal with this lion situation for them. Okay. They might be a little bit more thankful if they see a military member asking for, because you have you have military insignia in them too, so. Mm -hmm. So it'd be very obviously part of the military. Yeah. So to bring up my Mayette notes that are really old. 
for perspective, my Mayat notes were made in 2000, 2014, so still a little bit old. So long. Sounds about right, because that's a name I haven't heard in quite some time. Oh, yeah. Like, nobody ever follows uh, Mayat. And actually, uh, Mayat is believed to be of two minds. Um, there is a bit of a belief that uh, Mayat is actually a brother, uh, a pair of brothers, who have kind of become one god in the interest of kind of bringing their followers together. Um and here in this temple, it is actually a little bit clear that that is the case. Um, when you get to the front door of the temple, uh, the door doesn't open. And as you're standing around confused for a minute, like, there's a door here, in it, but it doesn't move at all. Somebody comes out the wall next to the door. Like out of like they come out of the wall. Yeah, or? they just walk out through the wall, next to the door. <laughs> I'll really look at them and be like, "Oh wait, how 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 do you get in this place?" Oh yeah, you must be new around here. So the, the it's it's a very old temple. Uh, it was built long before the the town was even put down. Um, it, the it, there's a lot of like. Weird things about this this temple. Uh, doors aren't doors. Windows aren't windows. Uh, walls are sometimes not even walls. Um, the 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 door is actually here, next to the door. And he like puts his hand through it and then pulls it back out. They're good uh -huh. folk, but it's very peculiar. You you didn't you didn't know Mayat is the god of. Of trickery as well as travel? Uh, no, no, Maya is not uh, the god I typically come to, but uh, thank you for your help. Oh, you're very welcome. I'll go through this weird ass wall. Okay, uh, give me a perception as you're doing so. And Walk into the wrong spot. <laughs> apparently, John is over there. Fucking with my yeah. goals. So. Uh, did, ah! that, did that oh, really just happen? Hold on. Yeah. Because I don't know how this comes up because it doesn't show up in chatty, which is really annoying. Um, so I'm going to assume it said that he, he did redeemed it. it. It says okay. Ordinary John redeemed a minus 1d4 two player die right. roll. So roll me a d4 minus your perception, but it looks like it's not going to hurt. <laughs> Yeah, so you, like, start walking through the wall, and you notice something kind of graze against your leg, and as you're coming through the wall, you, like, feel a rope that you almost tripped over. <laughs> By myself, this freaking temple, man, this god's kind of a jerk. <laughs> uh, but when you get inside, um, the room is decorated like an M.C. Escher painting. There are, like, stairs that go up the ceiling upside down, and people are walking, like, through doorways or through windows or through walls going up these stairs and across side stairs. Um, you kind of have to start walking up a set of stairs that kind of twists into being a sideways set of stairs to get to, like, this platform that's angled sideways uh, in the temple uh, where a number of clerics are roaming about, handling some things, talking to a few people. Hey, that worked. I don't know why that was delayed, but... It says for unknown, though. It's annoying. Um... But a, a, after a few moments, uh, a cleric will walk up to you. Uh... Oh! You are a tall one! It's a little gnomish, uh, uh chap. Uh, he's wearing... I, I was worried it was going to be a goblin for a second. Nope, he's wearing these, like, suspenders that go down to a pair of shorts. And he's got on a pair of socks and sandals. And no shirt. Alright. Socks okay. and sandals. Jesus. Yeah. Oh, what if it's your bow? What can I do you for? 
Uh, I am uh, here uh, with my military members, and I am looking to purchase um, a possible restoration. Oh, we could do that for you. Uh, we need to know, though, what uh, for what reason do you need the restoration? Um, I had a, an unfortunate run-in with a... Uh, Something that decided to drain me of most of my constitution. Something tried to drain you? Yeah. Oh, that's much, much, much concerning. Well, we can fix that right up. Uh, right. Now, we have a few options for you. You could try this, and he holds up a potion that he seemingly pulled out of nowhere. This may cure all your problems, or it may change your problems. And he closes his hands. We could use it the old-fashioned way. A little bit of the touch in just the right places will heal you right up, if you know what I'm saying. Or, or, we could do it the boring way. The boring way costs extra. <laughs> What's the cost for the fun ways? Ooh, well this, and he like brings the potion back into his hands. This is only a hundred gold. And he closes his hands. Suspicious. The second option is only 300 gold. And the last option is 450 gold. You could win big with the first one. Could win big? What are my odds here? Oh, we don't talk about what the odds are. Mm. It's just a lot of fun. We've seen a lot of really interesting things happen with it. But nobody yet has what? been the big winner. What What would happen to the big winner? Oh, the big winner would see a great blessing from, from mm. my... Uh... Don't you want to be the big winner? Get yourself a big case old blessing! Here. What's worst case scenario? If you buy four of them, you have four chances of getting healed. Worst case scenario is you just end up a little bit differently able than you were before. And then we could still do the boring way, right? After that? Assuming it doesn't affect your personality dramatically, yes. <laughs> this, um... Oh lord. Give me a give me a uh, sense motive here for what he's saying. Okay, there is a chance that the potion option can just straight up kill you. In fact, it won't kill you or remove you from existence. Oh. He's a, he is implying <clears throat> that taking the potion can transfer the stat damage you have to a different stat. Yeah, so like AK but it could also, transfer it to charisma, which would kill correct. me. But it could also did. cure you completely. Or it sounds like there is some kind of like big, big win effect that you could get. Yeah, I'm not sure prices. it's risk death, though. It's That's quite fun! <laughs> Lots of people have won little bits. Uh, yeah, but worst case scenario, I'm dead. I'm not sure. Maybe Ganthet to... or maybe Maya will appreciate your your ch your willingness to chance fate. Oh Lord! You're, you're technically the lowest XP in the party. What 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 what's the worst to risk here? <laughs> you just roll in, Karada. <laughs> A half, a half orc uh, inquisitor. God, it's tough, Dane. <laughs> but she's the other half is orc. Yeah, she's orc half. We have a lesser version of it, and he like points to a smaller bottle. It only does part of it if it fails. Not as big a win though. If you win this one, just a little win. Lots more little wins. Yeah, only fifty version? gold. YOLO, let's go for it. Little one or big one? Big one. <gasps> oh, for the same time. Big one. Do you want to make the roll or should I? I'm making the roll. 
god, if I end up dead! <laughs> hey, he could transfer it all to your strength. <laughs> Ooh. My death yet? No one's level 8, right? Okay. Hold up, can I, can I use my, uh... My... You can. You can use your ability to influence a D100 roll. Alright, I'm doing it. Plus or minus. Can I influence my own? I'm looking to... No, Tom's Tom's character is a follower oh. of the eight, and so he has the... the like... He has a deedal ability to influence <gasps> a D100 roll. Jess is buffing me. Okay. Yeah, I I'm... forgot about that. I'm trying to influence it positively. Okay. Excellent. The follower of the eight. I forgot about that. Oh okay. Uh, uh, John says he gave me one, too. Yeah. There were yeah, two of them on that. Okay, cool. Thanks, okay. Guys. Um. So in this particular case, you get a lesser boon. So you will get two I'm points of your two points of your con damage shield. Ew, that's it. This is yeah. bullshit. I mean, you went from a twenty nine to the thirties. Yeah. Well, what, what? How much time damage did you have? Yeah, you're, uh, it's not permadeath yet because no, no member of the party is level eight yet. Because I was gonna say, uh, two points is pretty good considering you spent what fifty gold. Mm -hmm. No, that was a hundred. No, she spent a hundred, so oh, she bought, she got okay. the she got about the equivalent of her lesser restoration. Do you want to try, try it again, again, boys and girls? Should Nothing bad could happen. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's try again. Yeah! I'm mood today. Amblin. Oh, man. Um. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. You know it's bad when he has to roll another die to determine the consequences <laughs> okay. of this die. Uh, your con is pristine, but whatever bonus you, whatever negative you had before, put it in your strength. Oh, god damn it. You're welcome. Well, it doesn't kill me, but... You immediately fall to the floor, trapped in your gear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how <laughs> encumbered are you now? She can't uh, even pay. It won't actually let me adjust my... Oh, oh yeah, because you've got buffs that potentially affect your strength. Just whatever your bonus is, keep it in mind for right now. What is your... What's your current penalty? Well... I would have a seven strength right now. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you're pretty encumbered right now. Like, you, it takes you effort now if you want to buy another. Oh, my lord. You gonna keep it going? You've low, you've, you've not done greatly twice. So, the, it's only gotta well, be it's up gotta from be here. in my favor, right? Yeah! Let's do it! Alright, let's give it one more go. Potion away! <laughs> okay. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, you will heal four more points of the ability damage. All right, so now I'm only at a minus seven. Hmm. Look at that! Do it better. Yeah. Good I'm job. Seven strength now. This is entertaining. You gonna try Although again? It's turning to be a more expensive route, <laughs> but it's entertaining. <laughs> All right. Let's try again. Okay. Let's hope for big I, money. I'll give you some good luck here, I promise. Alright. And he uncorks the bottle, and he smooches it on the top, and then recorks the bottle and hand his, hands it to you. It's good luck! Okay. He winks at you. Oh lordy. You roll a hundred. Like all the little people like me. Whoa! <laughs> What's scary is that at minus seven you could still die to the charisma switch. If it was minus six, it'd be much safer. Uh, heal back another two. Oh. So was that... I was at 11, which means I was at a minus seven. So I'm at a minus five. I mean, this is entertaining, at least. You've done good so far. A little less I mean, than I'm... the value that you could have gotten otherwise. But, but all the fun... Wasn't it interesting to feel your armor, like, crush you? That must have been a fun feeling! No, not really, but... Oh. You're you not- know. you don't like that kind of thing? 
No, not really. No. I like it. I like the feeling I get when things give me hugs. Okay. Gonna go again? Big prizes! Big prizes. Hell? Can't die at this point, so... <laughs> Armor hugs. It all goes back to your con. I'm only at a minus five now. All right, he smooches the top one more time. You want good luck, Spitz? Go for it, Bob. All right, he you gives it a... It's good luck, it's good luck. He gives it a bit of a spit. Yeah, at least he didn't swallow it. Ooh, it's a good thing I did. This one was particularly putrid for you. Oh, jeez. Uh, your con goes back down again. Uh, but your strength penalty is gone. So now it's just back to the con. Yes, but you do heal one in the process on this one. Alright, alright. I mean, this ain't terrible. Still a chance! Right. Still could be a big winner! Oh my god. I feel like this is just a waste of my People money. People are actually starting point. to crowd around you, though, as you've now bought five of these. Yep, I'm chanting, do it, do it. All right. <laughs> oh my god. Here we go. Like that fucking psychopath that like actually tries to six link your shit with fusing orbs. <laughs> and just the damn hey, I've done and that. I have too. Thirteen fusings. Oh, yeah, look. I've done it in thirteen hundred fusings. I've done it in four. ten thousand fusings. Game back four. Oh, I'm I'm oh, good. God. I'm healed. Hooray! Yeah, we did it. We did it. <laughs> did it. We did I it. She's a champion. With more money than I needed to, yeah, but yeah. we did it. People start cheering and getting all excited, and like all together, it's like a really fun experience. All these gnomes are really excited that you got healed. Yeah, that was entertaining. They're also really excited because Matt Maya just gained a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a very profitable day was had. Oh well, it was entertaining, you know. Oh, for your for your help, we'll give you one more thing. And he reaches underneath one of his reaches like into a suspender, which you notice like as he lifts up and reaches under the suspender, his arm disappears into his skin. Because it doesn't come out like the other side of the suspender. It's like he's reaching into a pocket that must be inside of his skin. And he pulls out like a little tiny bag of something and hands it to you. This is a little bit of fun dust. Fun dust? <laughs> Add this to your next potion and see what happens. Oh, okay. It's different each time. Or, oh, oh, okay then. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You've been a very, very devout follower. Or at the very least, contributor. No, good luck on finding your way out. Bye! <laughs> Jesus. And you notice as you turn around, as you turn around, all the stairs have changed. Oh, fuck. And it'll take you a while to find your way out of the temple. All right. <laughs> it's a game. It's fine. It's, it's, it's just like a maze. But you do eventually find your way out. Like, eventually you realize you have to walk through... You, well, you figure you have to walk through a wall. So you bumped your head on quite a number of walls on the way to figuring this out. But eventually you manage to walk out the right wall. Sure, she probably looks like such a weirdo. Like, every wall she's like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't look like a weirdo because... Literally everybody here is doing that to get, like, around this place. This is entertaining. They're fun. Mm -hmm. I like them. No one ever remembers they exist. Uh, but yeah, after a while, you can make your way back to the party. Alright, guys. I'm healed. And I have some fun dust. Anyone want to try it? Good, thank you. <laughs> Mal doesn't want any fun dust. Uh, Mal's good on variants. Uh, How was that? 
It's fun dust. I have no fucking idea what it does, but they called it fun dust. You are genuinely unsure what it what it what she like. She seems like it is fun dust, but what the hell could fun dust be? At some point during her absence, I would definitely pull Zeke aside, by the way, and just uh, basically warn you, Zeke, that it feels like he locks on even faster than normal because we've only been in town for literally like few hours and he's already starting to like lock on to me and i would ask you if you've had anything happen to you since you got into town and, and go to nothing's happened to you zeke okay i might i might just have to go sleep out like have erevos throw up a, a rope trick for me and just go sleep out on the outskirts tonight well, you're fine for now, so. And you do have a meeting coming up. I'm gonna yep. I'm gonna fall into gnomish if I'm not careful again. Yep. But just basically telling Zeke to keep his eyes open and uh, let me know if he sees anything. Um. But if Ra's good, then I guess we can all go to the meeting together. Okay. Uh, I will not need to roll any random encounters or anything for you journeying out there. Uh, there's nothing to worry about there. Is your travel is perfectly safe because you made a wonderful donation to Mayette as a party. Um, and so you can make your way out to meet up with the shifters. And I was hoping that John wouldn't just be in chant, but he's still got a work call he's got to get in. What a jabroni. But that's probably for the best, because John would probably try to eat all the shifters or kill them or sell them off into slavery or some other weird shit like that. Web them and then grease them. One of them one of them will be shape shifted into like a unicorn and he'll be like, let's chop off that horn and sell it for gold. <laughs> Wait, eunuchs don't never mind. <laughs> Not that kind of eunuch corn. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> all right all right that's that's, that's enough john we, we can't we can't talk shit to john when he's not in here right? i mean he is he's wait, watching. wait wait till he wait till he joins the actual zoom though. he's watching it's more fun this way <laughs> um all yeah. right so um, you guys head out uh to meet with the shifters um when you arrive there at first, there is actually no one here. I look for bunnies. Uh, give me a perception. Uh, no, no creatures. No, I see no bunnies. No creatures. All right, guys, enough. looks like we're good. No bunnies this time. Um, where is there? It is. Uh, after a little bit, though, uh, Cassius, a wolf will kind of nuzzle into your leg and sniff at you a bit. Like, oh, that's I was. Oh, this bunnies. is this is really weird. Like, wolves are not usually solitary. They definitely don't wander up to people like this. Like, even a even a well trained dog wouldn't have this kind of behavior. He doesn't seem aggressive at the moment, though, right? No, no signs of aggression at all. Looking oh, at it, though, of... it's like sniffing and moving in a way that is very different than the way even a wolf would move. Like, one of the things you notice is it's strafing. Like, it's moving to the side, step by step. Hmm. I'm just going to kind of look at everyone else and... See if they notice this. Yeah, finally everybody else can kind of turn as they start noticing the, the sniffing. But I was assuming you're usually towards the back of the group, so you yeah. would have encountered it first. And then I'll um, I'll try to kind of like look around and see if I also notice any other wolves or anything. Give me another perception. This kind of... No, not quite. This seems a little too coincidental. 
if you point out the wolf that I did not notice, I, I, I will simply say, we are ready to meet when you are. <laughs> I just yeah, talked to I'll, a wolf. I'll, I'll just kind of look at you until you see, until you make eye contact and then look down. I'm like, look, I was you, looking for bunnies. I was looking for bunnies. When you I make that statement, a tree will start to grow out of the ground. And then the tree will kind of chain shape like the arm the the like branches of the tree start to reach up and then the branches kind of lower down to the side of a figure that starts to take on a more feminine shape one of Frida's monsters and it will start to move towards you a face kind of forming in the wood uh, and then a pair of legs starting to pull out of the ground and like extend upward into a very feminine shape. And it takes a few steps forward. You are the one they call Maldronicus? That is my name. Hello. Is, is this the one I met before? Or no, you have not met this person before. So, you know, much has happened since we last scheduled this meeting, but still quite pertinent, I suppose, to update each other on what is going on. Much has passed. It is because of you that I find my freedom. Um, when she says that, I'm just gonna, like, try and is it knowledge nature? Or... Uh, yeah, knowledge nature would be relevant here. Um, she... you know she's likely a druid, or a dryad, but you're not, like, not sure why that would mean she's free kind of thing yeah um and yeah you don't really get much on that sense motive there other than that she it seems like there's nothing that she she could be lying about uh Ra, you get you get the you don't really understand the freedom thing still um because dryads are normally tied to a tree um and there's not like a tree locally around here so it's weird that she's making the statement of freedom um Especially since she was just a tree a moment ago. Something about this doesn't doesn't sit right, though, from your knowledge of dryads. But she looks very, uh, like, dryadic. Your action... I could, I could see your confusion. Your actions in Bullwold have yeah. set me and my sisters free. I, like, I assumed it was, but Mal wouldn't have known that, so that's why I was like... Still, like, being confused with it, mm -hmm. but um, my guess would be it's something to do with the tree um, in Biowold when she said tree. Um, but I would, I would say, um, like, if she basically says that, then I would more or less ask, does this have to do, was the tree destroyed? No, the, the tree was most certainly not destroyed. Uh, we were not... We were not bound to the tree, per se. There is... We are limited to the, the forest itself. And the forest was kept very close, very tightly knit in Bullwold. They wish not to grow it. They wish to keep us to themselves. But we're free now to make things beautiful everywhere, to rid this place of this emptiness. You don't, you notice the emptiness, right? So little air for you and so little pleasure for us here. I'm gonna make a, I don't even know if, if Mal knows about the photosynthesis. No. No. No, um, the air, trees, trees don't make air. Uh, don't. They, they do. That's how you, that's how you breathe. The grass does yeah. some, but the trees do better. And the trees yeah. look better. And she gestures out behind you. Wouldn't you agree? They really add to the scenery. I kind of take my, my book out and sort of scribble like some notes in there about like sort of trees producing oxygen or like, uh wait don't you have ranks in knowledge nature 
I do. I'm just not rolling well. It's fine. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. Oh. I'll, I'll waste my bad rolls on like knowledge checks. It's okay. Well, I assumed oh. that that would be like one on one, though. No, not necessarily. Like, there's. Keep in mind that like people will forget all kinds of various things. Like, what's a pseudopod? That's not the same thing, though. It, it is kind of the same thing. Like, it's it's something that's very basic to biology, and you can't remember it to biology. A tree's making air is like. If I gave I you an equation and asked you to world, figure but... out this according to FOIL, do you think you'd be able to? Yeah, but if you gave me an equation that was 2 plus 2, it would be a lot different. But this isn't necessarily 2 plus 2. I mean, I don't know if it's different in this world, but it just seems like it would be... I mean, it kind of is. This isn't a world where, like, science is regularly taught. Higher, yeah, education, makes... higher education doesn't really exist unless you happen to have been city-born and city-raised. In, in like reasonably reasonable wealth you're we're not in sierra savant where education is just a part of the system this is a bit in between like the medieval era and the modern era there's some of the pleasantries of the modern era with some of the like old world annoyances of the medieval era they're still like poor and dramatically poor people um and they're like expected there's like a quasi slave system um, that in the first world now doesn't exist, but you see a lot of the same first world comforts that exist in this world. Um, I, I suppose we could talk about things for quite some time, but perhaps in the interest of importance, can you, can you update us on what is going on on the border? From what we know, there seems to be conflicts between the yeah. spread of you, these you mean you mean the hideousness yes I, I, yes I suppose we could call it that it's so ugly purple is such an ugly color wouldn't you agree huh. it looks certainly, so bad contrasted in our beautiful certainly. green Certainly red is a much superior campaign color. <laughs> uh, what? Uh, uh, excuse me? What? Just because you're dressed in that hideousness does not make it any better. All right, that's a... God, are we rolling for initiative? <laughs> um, I cast burning hands, no. Oh, God. I was, I was not aware that everybody was so opinionated about colors. I'm literally wearing the color she's dissing right now. Yeah. I'm a little opinionated. I, I would say, um, okay, yes, it is hideous, but how, how is it? it? It approaches your borders, if not already hit them, from what we know. Can you, are you keeping it in check? We have done well to keep it from spreading too far, but it spreads in a very unusual way. You see, the sky makes it spread. The air above us becomes tainted with the purple. And as it does, the ground starts to change. And nothing we do really seems to push it back. We stop the creatures from forming and the pustules from building up on the ground. But the air remains purple. Man. Make a frivolous knowledge nature check. Uh, yeah, that's super unnatural. The air normally doesn't, like, the color of the sky doesn't normally determine what the ground is going to be. And there's definitely not, like, pustules that uh, that appear in nature. How windy is it in this area? Uh, there's, like, a calm breeze right now. It's usually, like, lightly breezy. It's not heavily breezy. Occasionally, it's some larger gusts, but... Does, does what he's explaining sound like uh, like spores or anything like that? Yeah, like, like pustules okay. would be like if you have like a like a growth of like something on your face. Yeah, well, I was thinking like dandelions, like how they kind of like... Go no, this, this sounds much more like disgusting. Like the earth itself is getting acne. I, I ask the Dryad, have you tried any sort of uh, sky magics? Topical creams? <laughs> no. Sky we have magic. not 
We do not have access to much in the way of sky magic. We try to plant more trees in the area. However, the air seems to taint the trees, turn them into tentacles. But yes, if, if the sky is what causes it, would it has to be certainly the sky can't be being changed, could it? It must be something in the sky, and if it's in the sky, then it could be like a cloud. Well, then the tree should clean it out. Not We've tried necessary. blowing at it. We've you tried growing changed. trees in it. We've tried changing the lighting conditions. These are the things we know, and these are the things that haven't worked. I keep falling a little into Goblin. It's supposed to be a little bit more leaned back than that. Sorry. No, this is a Goblin. <laughs> So the lighting is what's, it's, how exactly do you mean the lighting? I don't, it's, it's the color. Like, imagine if, if a color were a disease. And if you, if you interacted with the, if the world interacted with it, it caught it. So like the sun shining through it causes the ground that it's There isn't really sun there anymore. The sun is gone in the purple sky. It is just purple purple in the sky at all times of day even in the night purple I still have a camouflage <laughs> no it's not your shade much different oh. Actually, no way I go. Again, about trying to make like a giant sunglass for the the, the wagon <laughs> all right mr burns just like <laughs> We have tried much daylight and even putting lightning storms there, hoping it would burn away the air that is bad. We have tried using different breathing apparatus. Nothing has worked. It's unlike anything we've seen. It is a shame that we that the that the the high druids of Bolwold did not the hierophants of Bolwold were not willing to listen to us or the shifters because maybe things would have ended up better yes uh, i fear at this point perhaps only striking at the heart can stop its spread but we are far from being able to do so unfortunately as too are we uh if we cannot spread that way our abilities are limited. When we get there, we do notice that there is a separation from our abil our powers. It seems to dampen our connection to the Earth itself. We, we're doing, uh, I guess, essentially pertinent here uh, on our behalf is we we plan to potentially go into that area. Per senti pertinence? What? So, I'm not familiar with this term. Pertinent? Pertinent, yes. Like, are you making fun of my, like, accent, or? Oh, no, like, it's, it's, a, it's a tree person that does not have a high oh. intelligence. Importance. Oh, yeah, oh thank it's... you. You're welcome. Um, it... We are going into the the ugly area to try and learn how it's spreading. Ooh. Is there anything that might be helpful? Perhaps. Um, we have noticed that while the trees don't survive, it does slow. It does slow some of the growth, uh, but it does create vines afterwards. So perhaps this isn't a great idea. Um, well, could I... You, could you give us trees in pots? I can give you trees in bags. And she hands you a, a small bag of, of seeds. These are magical seeds. If you plant them, they will grow a tree within days. What matter of botany is this? The best of botany. <laughs> Botany's best, if you will. So the the trees could potentially 
They are botanically beneficial. Oh, yeah, I'm like I'm just like thinking out of character. So like we can plant these and they would grow and then eventually turn into tentacles, but in the interim they would basically give us like a safe zone if we but we'd have to let them grow first and we'd Yes. If if you after a few hours a smaller plant will form, but it will kind of change the ground around them is what she kind of explains. And so in that time, as it's like as the tree is growing, you will have kind of a safe area. Um, but then the eventually you'll like notice the tree start to like have the life that's in it change, and as that life that's in it starts to change, you'll have to move away from where the where a tentacle is starting to form, or you'll need to chop down the tree. Does uh does this stuff spread um, without spreading through the trees? Um, it does. Like I said, it it spreads through the sky. The trees will change the air. We believe that in some way it is affecting the air, but we're not sure why blowing it away doesn't help. If it affects the air. We really wish we had some sort of ability to trim out things square by square. You know, are you familiar with the Move Earth spell? I am not of... Not to that type of spellcaster, unfortunately. Well... We were hoping there would be some sort of move air spell. You're, I mean, familiar enough to know that, like, it moves, like, land in cubes. I know that it works in, in the way that the name intends it to. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I never heard of uh, any kind of air equivalent of it, but maybe some of this air magic that we've I've just found I out do. about. I really wish there was some way that I could... Bend air. It's an interesting thing if I could do it. It would be a bad premise for some sort of entertainment. But a good premise I couldn't help but throw in that stab. It's like watching air bend. Shots fired. Shots fired. I love that show. I love that show too, damn it. As long as they don't make a 3D <laughs> movie of it, so that's live action, yeah. I think we'll be alright. As long as they don't John have goes, like... I cast web and murder her. As long as they don't have like M. Night Shyamalan like directed to or something, we'll be fine. Yeah. That, like, but that's not gonna happen. No, they'll instead have J.J. Abrams direct it and it can have all the lens flare in the world. I'm okay with that. I'd rather deal with lens flare than uh, not being able to pronounce main characters' names properly. <laughs> Um, I, I thank you for your gifts, and we will try and plant trees, but, uh, I don't. How big is the radius that these trees clear? Several, so to... several feet. Have so you like, seen any creatures? If you really do intend to go in there, it is a benefit to you for a short time. You can at least get a rest period out of it. Oh, I see. It's almost yeah. like I'm handing you some kind of item that will allow you to get a little ways deep in there without just implicitly being killed by the sur the surroundings because you can't rest. Have you uh, seen any creatures other than the tentacles? Oh, yes! Anything you could tell us about them? Wolves with sideways mouths that howl out in a way that makes you feel like you're forgetting who you are. And in a way that makes others forget who you are. And they oh, clamp God. down into your legs and they, like, pull away at you as they howl with their teeth strapped into your legs. It really makes you forget who you are or who people were. Gross. Unfortunately, it fits with what we know about these things. I've been told, though, that it makes your carcass quite delicious, or at least that's what the things that have that we've heard talking in the minds of others say. Yeah, I assume that pulls up a sense motive. The fuck! <laughs> oh, good God! Oh, uh, that's why you gotta save them. Um, yeah, my four. It's super good at no okay. sense motive. Uh, with a thir with a thirty three, um, 
you're getting the idea that at some point they've had people that have been able to mentally communicate, and there is possibly some other benefit to being bit and having this effect happen that might enhance your intellect. In fact, one of you, during the situation that happened with the scrying, got a lot of intellect all of a sudden for a very brief period of time as they felt themselves being pulled out of existence. Was it arachnid? It was... I don't know who an arachnid is. There are no spiders in this campaign. But no, no it's, it was it's not recluse. any spiders or things that sound like uh, another word for spiders. It's a recluse, Tom. <laughs> I said there's no goddamn spiders. Thank God. <laughs> um... I mean, the whole party picked Charisma as their dump stat. There is no one in this party that has a Charisma above 12. I have an average. I Above 12. I didn't pick it as a dump stat. The I one just... person with the Charisma above 10 is dead. I just put all my points and my mandatory points into Strength, and then I needed uh, Con so I could survive, and then I needed to be Dex for attacking things. Otherwise, though, what you've done for us has been of great benefit. And if you can, if you can help find some way to rid us of this problem, I think there's more room for us to discuss. Well, we would like to coat this whole place in forest. I think that some of, some of the others have the wrong ideas. The Plains does have a place to exist, but this has become our home. And I would feel comfortable with not much more, but enough to make it feel like home. And I believe we could discuss where that line could be, if that seems amiable to you. It's seems perfectly reasonable, and my, my, my word still stands. If any help you can give us on combating this spread, you can have your share. Like, my people <coughs> do not settle this far out here. It's, it's mostly an area that could use a forest, I would imagine. There is one thing we would like to offer a thank you for, though. What you did with the shifters was... Or, I'm sorry, what you did with the were lion population was of great benefit. They were, unfortunately, very diseased. We'd done what we could to try to save as many of them as we could. But once the disease takes hold, it can be very difficult to escape from it. It can be almost like your brain is leaving you. It takes away what you know and what you believe to be true. It's terrifying. Yeah, I can't say we ever met one that was still thinking rationally. No, they, they lose. Rational thinking tends to go first. They start to believe in abstract concepts. The idea that anything that they exist on or live in is theirs, and anything similar to it should also be theirs. It's a sad, sad thing that happens. Well, I do agree with some of the ideas that they spoke of, that you're not the natives here. You are a byproduct of, of what is here. We all must grow and we all must gain. I think that's a reasonable thing. I personally don't always like the smell of your kind, but I recognize the mutual benefit we have to each other, and I think more people should recognize the benefits of each other. Yeah, yeah, that's one of the most reasonable things I've heard in quite some time. That's like exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> well, now that we have our freedom, the shifters have given us a lot more of a platform to discuss what we truly believe. 
it's interesting what happens when you eliminate stuck up hierophantism from the equation. And you let the trees make the decisions. Trees are uh, smarter than some things that I know. I'll say that much. Um, so you get the impression that, like the the whatever these dryads are, they've really made a significant amount of like change in the shifters. Because this is different than the shifters mo. She's talking about like uh -oh. limitations and whatnot. So it seems more like they've had an impact on the shifters than vice versa. Yeah, like the shifters' goal was to free to free them so they could grow the forest, but in, in freeing them, it's kind of created an a equal effect where the shifters have kind of realized like the reason the druids want to be or the reason the dryads wanted to be free was because like there is a benefit to growing a forest out here. Um, but there is also like you know, it's a it's a communal benefit. That's why, yeah. you know, that's why they weren't, like, the shifter. The shifters aren't killing everyone that leaves Bullwold. You've seen, like, society starting to form outside of Bullwold for people that don't want to, you know, live under the, con the current condition of Bullwold. No, the like vampires, you know, were from Lukil. Like that crappy first city that we ran into, and not that cool second city that was all dark and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um... But that second village couldn't have existed without the forest, without the trees being there to provide them the cover necessary. So it's it's there's trade offs you make. Well, uh, sounds like uh, you're getting ready to part ways. Um, I do have a question. Um, yes. What happens if that spreads to Ballwold? The great tree will be in great danger, and it will put at risk all of us. The greater the great tree becomes, the more we are connected to the roots of the others. But if it, if it fades, we too may fade. That's what I was afraid of. Give me a diplomacy with that question. I want to know, like, kind of. Oh, my first time I get it. to use my plus nine diplomacy. Excellent. Um, she will give you another small item. Um, she gives you what looks like a little potted plant in a jar. Uh, this, thank you. This may seem a little strange. But make sure you breathe in there and give it some sunlight periodically. It doesn't need much, just a little. Just your air and a little bit of sunlight. And over time, it will give you great benefit. It will help you breathe in situations where the air may not be clear. And one day, it will ask you to give it a home and if you do so we'll give you great help you may also speak to it and we will hear it and do what we can to aid thank you you are most welcome please take good care of it i feel like you will no one else seems to ask about what will happen to the mother yeah and uh, we'll do our best to, well, what we can anyways, to keep that from happening. Thank you. That seems like a problem for every, but everything that's living out here. It very well could be. Well, we must be off. <laughs> and she, like, scatters a handful of seeds. Um, and as she does so, like, a series of trees start to grow up very rapidly. And she places a hand into one of the trees and kind of sinks into it and disappears. And the trees remain. Uh, give me a knowledge nature as this happens. <laughs> Mal on the awful the nature rolls. Get them all the way. All right, so Cassius and especially Ra. 
Cassius, Ooh. you feel like that's probably some very powerful druidic magic. Ra, you are dead certain. Like, the ability to grow a tree that fast is crazy powerful. And the way that she was able to just passively kind of step into it um, is almost impressive to you. We just need to find somebody that can cast sky magic like that and we'll be all right. Uh, and with that, let's take a short pause. All right. Uh, we'll be back in a little bit.